yes i hope everyone is doing fine uh, i received a lot of messages and queries on this part that why i am so bullish on the net zero scenario or the offering uh, for palantir so let me just uh, uh, take uh, some time on that to explain that what is the reason for me being so bullish on this part i don't know how many of you have seen that palantir actually introduced or published a blog which is called the net zero the data integration problem and how palantir enables data driven decarbonization i would recommend you guys if if you haven't seen it yet uh, please try to to have a look at it basically uh, what they said is is pretty much uh, uh, summarized in, in in small portions of it see you cannot have a net zero target until and unless you first understand what your exposure is okay an exposure could be in three categories which is your direct indirect or somebody who's who's uh, producing carbon in the supply chain your vendors and your contractors to support your business and you need to know this in order to do this you also need to to share data and we know that data can be used for different comparative purposes so and there could be government regulations privacy issues so you definitely need a lot of strong data protection uh provisions in in your tool around it so you need to handle a lot of data you need to handle a lot of complex data you also need to simulate scenarios because today you have a set of regulations which may be obsolete in 2 years and there may be new set of regulations so what you are doing today you need to work out scenarios that what could be the possible emerging regulations will look like and whether my business is sustainable there or not also the moment you start looking net zero from the point of view of revenue it will be very different picture that means there could be a portion of uh, of your revenue which actually has higher carbon offset prices that means if you are generating a 100 dollar and the amount of carbon dioxide you are you are emitting or any other green has house gas you are emitting out of it it might take more than 100 dollar so the question will come to you do you really need to do or to do that part of business because it's no longer economical for you so the business will inherently change or the industries and the companies will inherently change what they do and how they do so uh, in short i mean i agree uh, i think it's it's a pretty informative blog in journal and they discuss like the why the net zero is uh, is is a data problem so we all know that companies are committing for for carbon offset and removing carbon footprint we also understand that in the investment industry has came to a point where funds or assets around 43 trillion dollars uh, that is controlled by a very large sector of uh, fund managers they have made it very clear that their funds has to come at for net zero so what is happening it's it's actually putting that means you go to these funds or these funds are investing in company they try to look uh, what's your carbon carbon footprint look like now to be fair as of today rarely an industry or a company has come to a point where their carbon offset is zero so what these these funds are looking that okay but your carbon offsets are not yet zero but what's your commitment look like what's your plan look like what what you are telling to us or sharing to us is there in a basis on the data or you are just something which is pretty much coming out of uh, just pure powerpoints so at the end of the day if these people are going to deploy this amount of money in companies which are committed for net zero they also want to see it from the lens of data and the lens of a risk profile that is coming on top of it bp has been on the strategic investor in palantir and they invested in in 2014 now in 2014 none of the oil and gas company and not even other companies were expecting that they will make pivot for a low carbon future so for bp it was at that particular time was was as far as you could think of so in short what i'm trying to say is when bp went to partner with palantir they their idea and their objective was how to extract more value out of their conventional oil and gas business however seeing the success and what the company can do with data now when the bp has made pivot towards a low carbon future and rightly so they are also taking their partnership with palantir in that part either that means they have enough confidence that how palantir data and ontology 
uh, works in oil and gas business or in their supply chain it can help them deliver value in the low carbon business as well and this is pretty much one of the reason that somebody who has tested it has given confirmation that it's a, it's a quite a viable solution to take that part of uh, of the industry uh, as the as the change is happening seen in journal the the bp example and and the foundry carbon module implementation within the within the palantia business i mean there has been there has been several other cases that might emerge and one of the example that is is the strategic alliance they have declared with horizon materials now this is quite interesting in this uh, horizon material and palantia technology alliance it's not just the company itself it is to to decarbonize the global material supply chain that means what how do i see that at the end of the day it comes out with a functional product and expertise and data sets and going to the clients and telling them that uh, we can help you to decarbonize your material supply chain and it's a repeatable solution so in short that they build something and they also leverage each other sales force which i believe horizon has far better sales force in terms of global reach than palantir has as of today and to help them uh, taking foundry carbon module to more clients than currently palantir can do on its own also you cannot solve uh, just uh, carbon problems or carbon estimation just by having foundry you need industry's expertise and how different data sets have have created how they are stored and what is the challenge what are the critical activities what can be cut what cannot be cut so you need this kind of mixed of domain as well as big data expertise together so in short i think i i see this as a good example of two different companies one is strong in in tech and data another is strong in very strong in domain and supply chain coming together to solve uh, the purpose for the whole industry uh, let's see how it goes uh, in 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 practice in theory it looks all pretty good uh, every i mean the steps are in right direction but uh, we'll all need to see how it uh, how the fruits uh, is that when you read palantir own commitment to carbon neutrality they actually have some plots which shares that how they they try to assess or how they are actually estimating their own carbon footprint and when you look into this part they actually shown something in the comment that they are using calculated using fcm now if you look at the same document the fcm stands for foundry carbon module now i don't expect for foundry carbon module to be a standalone software but if you see how foundry is designed and as alex has mentioned in past that it's a, it's a combination of 500 different modules uh, sitting on the top of foundry ontology that you can plug and play to to solve different business problems also i mean with the access of low code no code approach so my understanding is of fcm is a kind of an app or a module a super module that is built using the low code no code plus available uh, foundry modules to actually deliver the solution but at the end of the day they have something which they are using internally and which has been used by some of the major client for example like bp so it's a problem which they have tried to solve uh, in a in a different part so they are pretty familiar in, in terms of it now having said that that while they are on this problem and they're solving there is no guarantee that palantir will succeed on it please don't get me wrong on this one net zero reporting and management is going to go huge no questions about it the the challenge that comes is that we already know that regulation is is kind of increasing in this part of business so it is going to go big and it is going to go global also the carbon footprint in general is a very complex problem that means it's not that easy for you to go and uh, measure your carbon footprint because it could be direct indirect from your vendors most important part which is is that polluters themselves have to report it and since whole industry has to report it there is no way the regulators and administration will have the capacity to go and scrutinize everyone that means it is at the end of the day is a data problem that means you have to demonstrate using data that how good your estimates are and i believe that moving forward there will be a lot of uh, data regulations and data requirements that will govern this industry in general that how and why 
uh, a certain company's net zero ambition or commitment or footprint has has a higher credibility than others so when we put net zero estimate in terms of a data problem we see palantir in a different light we see that is a company which can handle a very large complex amount of data set that can also work in a in in large with the with the demographic and the data protection constraint uh, it can work around uh, to simulate some very complex scenario so there is a natural fit so what's what's the challenge here so they have a product which has shown enough evidence that can serve the purpose in the in the net zero estimation and reporting market the, the challenge for palantir in this particular case comes is that can they reach enough customers in time to actually help them and buy their products and this is where i think the the biggest risk lies i mean we have seen in past uh, that uh, the sales and is the is the key bottleneck there is enough evidence in general the kind of uh, high impact and critical activities palantir has been trusted both in terms of gotham and foundry that the technology is is there it's always the question is how to put it in a commercial setup and how to reach to the right uh, customers in time and that will be the challenge in in journal because like i've said several times like client needs solution today and uh, despite whatever they are doing if you are not reaching client today i mean different companies will come together um, to solve it so for example like we have seen that 43 trillion dollar funds are committing for net zero so if you take 43 trillion and uh, even if you take 1% of that amount is to be spent on reporting that is like 43 billion and it's is quite a huge sum we are talking like really big 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 number out there so if you can even capture like 5% of that market you are still talking something like 2 to 3 billion dollar of uh, just purely from your foundry carbon model point of view so there is no question about it that uh, there is a uh, that there is market about it the only question remains on this particular part is can palantir tap it and this is something like so in general i'm bullish because i see a product which has a right uh, composition and right end to end solution going into it to solve the problem i see a tap that has already been established and it's only going to increase moving forwards the data requirements and regulatory scenarios are only going to become more complex so somebody has to build solutions that can work around it so these are the two things i am bullish my question mark is that can they do it that means when i say can they do it is can they reach enough customers in time to actually help them to solve their problem as of today and yeah i mean this is something uh, uh, we would like to see moving forward more evidence and more declaration in terms of new businesses that is focused or companies making a statement that we have hired foundry palantir foundry to solve our net zero solutions uh, estimation and things like that now the whole situation which i built based on tam uh, for net zero i mean it's pretty much the same situation what you are looking for crypto also so foundry for crypto same situation i mean the crypto market is growing the the regulations are getting complex and at the end of the day crypto is also a data problem so if uh, foundry for net zero or carbon reporting and management is a very large term the same applies for crypto i really don't have expertise to tell that which is bigger than other okay i have a extremely deep expertise when it goes for energy sector energy transition but my expertise in 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 crypto is 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 bare minimum the only thing i can see is that these two markets are quite big and palantir business if if tapped well into these could be as big as any other part in their government business or their commercial foundry business these are two of the biggest uh, areas to tap and let's see how palantir does it mm-hmm.